Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the MU stand, Manchester United 3, Fulham 1. What a game that was. What a game that was. But we are going back to Wembley, people. We are going back to Wembley. Where do I start for this? Where do I start for this? I mean, the game was just ugly in the first half. I thought Fulham dominated the ball possession. Uh, they, they created... A decent chance in the first half as well. And they, they managed to score first before us. They managed to score first through Mitrovic. It was a corner kick, set piece. They score. And you're thinking, okay, are we actually going to come back into this game? Because we are playing at Old Trafford and you expect Manchester United to come back. But everything changed. Everything changed after that incident right there. You're looking at it. I mean, Willian. Willian just cleared off the line with his hand. I, I want to show you guys the replay. I mean, the, the the screen for that. He cleared off the line with his hand. And that definitely completely changed the game. This is the incident that just turned a game on its head. 70 minutes. Sancho nearly scored. He goes, he goes past the goalkeeper. And it takes a shot. He thought it was a goal. But then Willian puts his arm um, to, to actually stop the ball from going in. That is a clear handball, and I don't care what anybody says. Some people are saying, oh, VAR, it's, it's the wrong decision. It's not a wrong decision. I mean, it's the right decision. Look at that. Are you going to tell me that he didn't do this on purpose? He clearly touches with his, uh, with his hand, and clear penalty for me. There's no question about that. There's no question about that. And after that, the game just turned on its head. But I thought, I thought Eric Ten Hag was static. In terms of making a substitution, I thought he, he we needed to take off Vic Holes, we needed to take off McTominay right in the second half, but that didn't happen. Right, just Eric Ten Hag, he's he has this behavior now. It's a pattern he's been doing this now consistently. That he is so stubborn, he doesn't just quickly change things. He 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 stays with the team, and it has proven to be this the same case in this one as well. He he waited until. 60 70 minutes to make a change but obviously sancho with that incident i mean with that incident william got a red card mitrovic is another one who was actually sent off as well uh and also the coach got sent off as well i mean it's crazy with what incident just three people got a red card and we get a penalty of course bruno steps up bruno steps up to take that and bruno scored from the penalty spot man like <clears throat> i thought really really thought i mean the whole time i thought we could get back into the match but i didn't think it was gonna be like this i didn't think we were gonna come back like this i didn't think there was gonna be penalties or red cards but i had a feeling that the team is capable of actually bouncing back and, and winning i mean we haven't lost at old trafford for a long time now for a long time we have not lost a game at Old Trafford. And this is another one. This is another comeback win from Manchester United. A massive, massive win. Now we're going back to Wembley, people. We are going back to Wembley. The next opponent is... Let me just quickly show you guys what it is. So this is these are the teams that are left. Um, so the semi-final draw has been out already. We are playing Brighton at Wembley. And Manchester City are playing Sheffield United. You could say that they have an easy draw compared to us, but I would have taken Brighton at the uh, beginning of the season. Semi-final against Brighton, you will definitely take it. You would definitely take it. So I'm not going to complain about the draw. I felt like Brighton, we can advance. I, I felt like we could beat Brighton as well and advance to, to the final. And it's going to be between us or Manchester City to win this uh, cup. Don't forget, I mean, we still are in the uh, Europa League. We still are in the FA Cup. So we still have two trophies to win this season, people. And <clears throat> in the league table, we're a top four position. So this season is really going outstandingly for Eric Ten Hag, especially for his first season. It's a very good uh, season for Eric Ten Hag. But after this, people, this there's an international break coming up now. So we're not going to have games uh, next week. But we are going to have the likes of Ericsson back. Um, we're not going to have Casemiro, but Ericsson should be back. And Anthony Martial also should be back 
after the international break. So we're going to need all the players uh, for, for the upcoming matches, people. We definitely are going to need uh, all the players. Another the player I want to really talk about is Sabitzer. Before I wrap up, I want to talk about this guy because this guy, he's just scored his first goal for Manchester United. I mean, congratulations to him. And what a finish that was. I mean, we haven't seen anything like that from Wakehorse. Uh, I mean, and this guy is a midfielder and what a finish that was. I mean, that sweet flick was insane. It was just insane. He finished that goal like a striker. He finished it like a striker. And that's how uh, we got in the lead. So Bruno scored the first penalty kick and then Sapitza scored the second goal. And then Bruno wrapped it up with the third goal with a smashing goal. But all in all, I think United uh, deserve to win the game. We deserve to win the game. But 90 minutes, if you analyze the performance, the performance wasn't good. But right now, it's not about performance, people. Right now, it's really not about performance. It's about winning games and just getting over the line. And sometimes that's what you need to do to win trophies. You don't always play well. Sometimes you just get over the line and make sure you get the result. And that's exactly what we did in this match. Uh, but throughout the entire game, like I said, uh, Fulham really dominated the game. First half, they really dominated. Even second half, they were getting on the ball. They were getting chances. Uh, David De Gea, that another one that I didn't talk about. I mean, David De Gea kept us in this game. If it wasn't for David De Gea, this game could have been done. I think we could have been 2 nil down at home. If not for that David De Gea save on Mitrovic's header. That was a stunning save. Stunning, stunning save by David De Gea. But who do you think is your man of the match? I, I, feel, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. I want to give it to Bruno or David De Gea. I think I'm going with Bruno because of, because of the goal. I think because of the goal, I'm just going to give it to Bruno. But if we're really talking about the key player tonight was actually David De Gea. Because if he doesn't make that save, I think we could be it out of the, 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 the FA Cup. So if, 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 if it wasn't for David De Gea, I think we would have been in big, big trouble. So David De Gea, huge, huge shout out to David De Gea for that big, big save, that turn the game on his head. And yeah, people, we move on now. We move on. Wembley, here we come. Brighton, here we come. I can't wait for that game. But yeah, thanks for watching, people. Don't forget... Uh, to smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. And do let me know in the comment sections who was your man of the match in this game. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Let's go, United. Let's go.